Welcome to Leading Life, the show all about living to the fullest and leading life on your terms. You will learn tips, tools, and strategies for achieving total personal transformation. I'm Brent. And I'm Cam. This is Leading Life. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Leading Life. I'm Cam, and he is Bren. <laughs> Uh, I am. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So today we, this is our 10th episode. All right. So double digits. That's pretty awesome. And, um, so far we've covered so many topics ranging from confidence to getting what you want to habits and routines. And Justin in the last episode talked about the fear of success. So that's pretty awesome too. So what is our 10th episode, Brent? Well, 10th episode is actually I like this one because it's my topic, obviously. No, the 10th episode is going to be about how to master anything, just mastery, you know, how to create mastery in your life, whether it's mastering guitar or mastering public speaking or whatever it is that you want to master in your life. We're going to give you a few tips and strategies on how to do that. Okay, awesome. So what have you been up to, actually, in the past week? Anyways, let's get personal here real quick. Oh. We're getting a little personal real quick, Kim. <laughs> now you want to get personal with me. This is different. I'm always the one trying to get personal with you here. Whatever, man. Just what? tell me what you did. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I spent the weekend out in Erio Beach. Uh, I had a couple gigs there, I, a couple shows, a couple performances. And, yeah, it was really nice to kind of get away and spend some time on the beach and kind of refresh. And now Monday, my favorite day of the week, we're back at it. And uh, here we are, Leading Life Podcast. How about you, man? Well, I, uh, I'm living with my parents and they are out of town, so I've just kind of been enjoying the cats' company <laughs> and stuff. It's pretty fun. I uh, set up my office room. It's looking really awesome. And uh, when it comes to the short films, I just got done editing the first half of Solitude is Bliss. And I think it's going to be a two-part series. I'm not exactly sure, but uh, things are looking up in the implicit visuals realm. It's pretty awesome. I'm getting really excited for Freak. The script is looking really good, very in-depth, a lot of plot twists and stuff. So I'm pretty excited. Um, let's uh, dive into the topic. No, that's really cool. I'm glad to hear all your films that you're working on are coming along well because we actually recently saw part of your film at our last Implicit Jam event, and that was really cool to see that, so see all the progress you're making. Anyways, let's get right into this topic. I'm really pumped about it. It's how to master anything, and kind of where I got the idea here is because in my life I find, and I, I bet you guys deal with this too, there's so many things out there that I'm interested in. Right. There's so many. There's like music is obviously where my heart is at the core. But at the same time, you know, I really love what we're doing with the podcast. And so I'm trying to spend more time towards that. You know, me and Cameron, we wrote a book and we're working on some other books and stuff. And, and I, I love to help out Cam with his films. And I love skateboarding and, and I love my dog. And, you know, the, all these interests, all these things that I want to really master in my life. And I really want to fully enjoy each of these areas and all these different things. But what I've realized is when you spend a lot of time in one area, may it be, you know, your health, you know, okay, you spend all week, you know, making sure you're, you're eating the right meals and you're working out consistently and you're educating yourself on better health and you're, you know, watching videos on YouTube, reading books, you know, talking to people, going to the gym, whatever it is, you're spending all your time and energy on your health. And I notice, you know, sometimes your family will start to, you know, you're, your relationship with your family will start to kind of go down the drain or maybe it's your business or maybe it's you know something that you love to do like your guitar skills right and uh, that's kind of the reason I brought this up because I've been spending so much time on my music a lot lately that I stopped thinking so much about my health or I stopped thinking as much about my business and so really it's about trying to balance everything as well as mastering just a few core things so let's get right into it right well, into it. okay dude oh, i know that uh tony robbins talks about that wheel when he's uh, i forget what seminar it was i think it was unleashed the power within and he had um <clears throat> he drew a wheel and like some parts of the wheel it was like slices of pizza almost and some parts of the wheel were like smaller than others and like he kind of mentioned that you know if one area is more important than the other you'll notice and your life won't roll smoothly and it'll be very difficult because, you know, you'll be, your music life will be amazing, but your health will be deteriorating. And, yeah. you know, it's just like a bumpy road. That's your life, basically. 
that's exactly what brought this episode on for me because I've noticed that, you know, and it's balance is like a never ending battle. You will always be battling, you know, to keep that wheel of life balanced, keep it centered. And it's always going to be up and down and it's a, it's a never ending battle. But uh, I got some tips here that should help you out, you know, and when it's when it comes to mastering things, when it comes to deciding how to master anything or just what you want to master, it's really step one is about limiting yourself. Limit yourself. Listen to me. Limit yourself. I know you want to master everything. I know you want to be the best singer in the world. You want to be the best dancer. You want to be an actor. You want to be a doctor. You want to be this and this and this and this. But the truth is, it's so tough to actually give the amount of time, energy, and passion into all these different areas it just won't work for you i mean who am i to say what is going to work and what's not going to work for you but think about it i was watching this interview recently with uh, chris angel he's the you know world famous magician and magician and illusionist and basically he had he was he's got this new show he's doing on on in vegas and stuff and all sorts of things like that and what he was saying was it kind of blew my mind because he said he works up to like 20 to 21 hours a day. Now, if you're good at math, which I may not be, but some people are, if you're good at math, that's maybe three or four hours of, of not work. That's like three or four hours of sleep. Like imagine if you spent that much time, that many hours on your craft, how good would you be? How, how masterful would you be? Right, Cam? Well, yeah, dude, I've noticed that like, that's how I learned filmmaking so fast and computer building and skateboarding is I just immerse myself in the subject and that's all I would do. I'd kind of like forget about eating, forget about sleeping and just go. And, uh, I guess this only happens when you're really, really passionate about something, but I'm sure you can like create that drive to want to learn and learn and learn and learn and just practice and practice and practice for 20 hours a day or whatever it may be for you, whatever you're willing to do. And you could just, just go. <laughs> that was me in my in my bedroom, man, learning yeah, filmmaking. Man. Have you ever had that experience? Like I know we've had this as kids, where like you do something so much, and you know maybe for an example, it's you play Pokemon Go so much. And this is just an example. I don't know anybody who plays this much Pokemon Go, but you play Pokemon so much that when you close your eyes to go to bed at night, all you see and all you basically experience is pokemon go yeah you know like, what like and then you wake up and you wake up like or you fall asleep and you dream about pokemon go you wake up the next morning you you wake up thinking about pokemon go and this could be anything this could be you know exercise Dude. this could be video games this could be guitar any skill you've had the corn dream right oh the corn, corn the corn dream <laughs> so in our city uh there's this common job like corn to tasseling and it's you just take a tassel off a piece of corn and you just run the rows and it's just like a it's field work and it's very popular in our you know region so everybody knows about it but everybody who's done corn to tasseling has gotten the corn dream <laughs> you just like you dream about pulling corn tassels like like it's you shut your eyes all you see is corn <laughs> yeah and it's because you've immersed yourself so much in that job you work so many hours a day that when you dream when you wake up the first thing on your mind is this corn of tasseling <laughs> or pokemon or whatever it is that that you immerse yourself in and this could be good and it could be bad like if you just watch horror films all day every day for like a week you're gonna dream of horror films you're gonna wake up and first thing you think of is you know what's under your bed or what's in your closet and that's that's really what I'm getting at here when I'm saying how to master anything and it's limiting yourself and deciding, okay, I'm going to master this thing, this thing, this thing. Maybe it's three things. Maybe it's four. Maybe it's five. I don't know what it is for you. Maybe it's just one thing. You want to be so good at one thing that you're just going to choose that one thing. Man, I wish I was only interested in one thing, but like everything, you know, catches my eye. So, oh, I know. And that's why it's so, that's why there's so few people who actually master something because it takes you have to kind of push past your your boredom like you know some people they do the same thing over and over or you know whatever it is maybe it's something they're passionate about but they do it so much that it's pretty much boring for them now and they don't want to do it anymore or they've kind of just lost the drive do you know what i'm talking about kim absolutely dude that was like me at band practice sometimes playing the same songs over and over again and eventually i used to like play lefty just because it's so like you know what i mean so i try to 
mix things up a bit. But yeah, I definitely know what you mean. Like things get boring and you got to kind of spice it up a little bit. Yeah, for sure. And I think a big part of that is just limiting yourself. And if things start to get boring, challenge yourself more. I find when we're challenged, that's when we really shine. You know, because when we're challenged, it's like there's something in front of us that's that we really want to break through. And it's that, that sense of challenge, right? If you're just doing the same thing and you're going through this pattern and you're in this rut and nothing changes, nothing, it's not more challenging. Like like working out, for example, if you did 10 push-ups a day for 30 days, by the time you get to day 30, you're going to be really bored with those 10 push-ups. But if you did one push-up on day one, and then two push-ups on day two, and then three on day three, and then four on day four, and then once you get to 30, you're at 30 push-ups. All of a sudden, you know, every single day there's this incremental challenge. You know, this is a small thing to break through. It's, it's, it's improvement. It's, it's making progress. I think that's a great way to get over, you know, boredom. Just keeping yourself challenged. And that also leads me into step two. Once you, step one, limit yourself to only so many things. Step two is find a role model in each of those areas somebody who you could look up to so if it's guitar playing right and you're gonna wanna find you wanna master guitar playing right you're gonna wanna find your favorite guitar player and study him read his autobiography just watch his videos his I say his could be her watch watch their um, their performances listen to their interviews whatever it is just immerse yourself in that person and kinda figure out how they tick and then that's a great way to, to not only learn but to just get inspired you know like cam give me an example who is your favorite filmmaker or your favorite film that really inspires you to make films star wars star wars. i i like it because of how intense and how in-depth the writing is you know like they there's star wars books there's star wars everything <laughs> everybody knows star wars because it's such a in-depth universe that it has its own laws of physics it has its own um, politics its own problems its own everything like there's different species there's different people like it's unbelievable man and that that right there is what blows my mind and i always look into movies like that and see like all right what did they do like how did they create this person's past and how they wrap that around and make that a plot twist and do this and stuff like that and why i always <clears throat> when it comes to mastering things like what do you what do you enjoy about this thing you know what i mean if you're into music take note of why you like this certain song if you're into filmmaking i take note to why why i like these movies what what about these movies make me tick and that can go with illusions or whatever like why why is this certain illusion really good if you're a marketer why is this commercial catching my eye stuff like that and that's that basically role modeling yeah for sure it's it's finding something to take inspiration from it could be a book it doesn't even have to be a person you know it could be a book could be a movie could be a film could be uh, an app right Pokemon we had someone here ask us twitch Shaw is asking how do you become a Pokemon master and we're about to show you in this episode because basically this is gonna be used to master anything not just Pokemon so find a role model and and that's really just someone to get inspired from something anything number three is to develop rituals and systems some sort of habit some sort of consistency something that you're gonna do and you're not gonna skip at all because it's it's something that you do on a daily basis maybe it's weekly maybe it's monthly but it's some sort of ritual that basically guarantees your success because you can't just be successful out of nowhere like you need to actually do stuff to get there and it's not just do something here and there and you know maybe you know at this point I'll do this and then that point I'll do that no it's like consistently doing something like anything if it's Pokemon Go like get out there and go catch them all just do it <laughs> maybe it's you know your ritual is I wake up at this time every day and then I go to this spot and then I go here and then I go here and then I come home for this and then I do that and then that and then every day it could be something different but the essence is the same as long as the essence of you know I'm trying to craft this skill I'm trying to, you know, work on mastering whatever this is, right? What do you think about that? Well, um, I know <clears throat> I was listening to a Hal Elrod episode, the Achieve Your Goals podcast, and he was talking about how you kind of um, don't do things for the result, just do it for doing it. You know what I mean? Like uh, he was talking about when he was a salesman, and he used to just make 20 calls. 
and it doesn't matter if those calls go through or if or if those calls like if he makes a sale or not. If he makes twenty calls, he's got he's bound to like get some sort of result. Right? And that goes with everything. If you just practice an hour a day or meditate an hour a day, you don't need to be perfect zen and like not thinking about anything if you screw up that's okay but as long as you're spending that time you're inevitable it's it's inevitable you're gonna get better yeah that's really the idea here is you want to create some sort of system that just guarantees it makes it inevitable that no matter what you're going to improve even one percent today even if it's just one percent or a small little step yeah and, and it's unbelievable how small it takes like my music teacher told me he's like it's better to practice five minutes in, in a day than an hour a week on one day. You know, like to spend Monday, I practice one hour. It's better to take five minutes every day of the week because then it's like, that's just how our brains work. You know, like consistency gets like, that's just how you master things is consistency. You can't just work out for a week and then become a bodybuilder. It's got to be every single day. You can't just go catch Pokemon this one day and then stop catching Pokemon. You're not a Pokemon master anymore. No, man, you've got to catch them all. You can't just catch one today or and then, you know, maybe another one next week. Like, make it your goal to catch one a day or two a day. Like, I forget who, I, I heard this from Eric Thomas, I think he says, he says, you know, he says, he was telling, he's talking about his daughter and his and his son. He says, you know, the difference between my son and my daughter is my son wants to take 20 shots and my daughter wants to make 20 shots if that makes sense to you so the difference is one person you know is gonna say okay I'm gonna try 20 times and the other person says I'm gonna succeed 20 times and until I succeed I will not stop until I succeed 20 times another person says I won't stop until I try 20 times right and it's it's just a different mindset a different mentality right if you make it your mentality that you know I got a system today that it's like no matter what I will spend one hour doing this or no matter what I will catch five pokemon today yeah right? and, and don't don't you know get bummed out about the results because that's what that's what discourages people al hal Elrod was talking about that because he was this guy who taught a bunch of salesmen how to sell a lot of knives so he what he did is he just made calls and talked to people for the sake of just doing it and not for the sake of making sales because because if you get bummed out about the result, it's going to discourage you and then you'll stop doing it. You know, you're, you're not always going to catch the Pokemon. You know what I mean? Don't make it your goal to catch 50 Pokemon a day. Just make it your goal to just try <laughs> to catch 50 Pokemon a day. And you might catch, you know, 25. Perfection. You chase perfection and you get, what is it, excellence. <laughs> yeah, that that is a different mindset for sure. Like, I, I've tried both. I've tried both. Like when I'm skateboarding, right? I've been trying to learn to skateboard. It's a new passion of mine. It's not something that I want to master. Or it's not something I'm that passionate about. But it's something that I, I enjoy doing a lot. And this is worth bringing up because, you know, you're not going to master everything. Like take inventory of all the things you do in a day or in a week or in a month. Like all the things that you enjoy and that you love. And decide, you know, which one of these do I love so much that I want to do every day and I really want to master and I want to be known as somebody who is an authority in this area and somebody who's a master. And figure out what that stuff is and then everything else is just for fun. Like it's just, it's not something you have to master. It's not something you have to stress out about if you're not good enough. And for me, that's skateboarding. Like I'm not a great skateboarder, but I love it. It's a, it's a passion of mine and it's not something I feel like mastering. But anyways, I'm about skateboarding, you know. It depends. Like sometimes I'll go out there and say, okay, I'm just going to skate around and see what happens. I have no time limit. I have no goal. I have no idea what's going to happen. I'm just going to go out there and do it. And other times I'll go out there and say, look, my goal is to ollie at least 20 times. Like 20 ollies make it. And it don't matter how long it takes me to get out there, my result is I'm going to make these 20 ollies. Right? And so it's a different mindset. I would, I would tell you to try both. You know, try going out there and saying, you know, I'm going to catch 20 Pokemon today no matter what. And then try going out there and saying, well, I'm going to try to catch 20 Pokemon today no matter what. See what works best for you. Yeah, because like for some people it might discourage them or for others it might just pump them up and make them even more motivated, right? Everybody's different, so. Yeah, like some people are seriously really encouraged by rejection or by failure. And other people, they any little bit of rejection or failure just brings them down and makes them want to quit. So it's a different mindset. It really is about self-awareness and knowing yourself and knowing what kind of what kind of habits, what kind of systems or rituals that you could implement that are actually going to help you because it's going to be different for everybody. Mm -hmm. All right. So step one was 
limit yourself. Step two is find a role model and immerse yourself in what they do. Step three, develop <laughs> rituals and systems that keep you on track and guarantee your results on a daily basis. And then there's step four and that's the last one. Step four, the last step here is just anticipate the challenges because there will be challenges. When you tell yourself, I'm going to do something every day no matter what, there are some challenges that arise because we live on planet Earth in today's society and there's always somebody who wants your attention or somebody's always trying to sell you something or somebody who always needs your help or you know some game that always you know wants you to, to play it or whatever it is. There's always something that's going to get in your way. Always, there's some sort of problem will arise or some sort of challenge. And to be able to anticipate these challenges before they arise and then eliminate them right away. So, for example, um, for me personally, one of my goals is I really want to master music. And by this, I mean I want to – it's – sorry, that's a big chunk. Master music, holy, that's a little overwhelming. No, I really want to master – guitar really is guitar is my passion i love playing guitar so for me personally is i'll play at least five to ten minutes of guitar per day at least right but there's a the challenge in this is i travel and when i'm traveling i don't always have a chance to whip out a guitar and play for five to ten minutes so i'll make it my goal to if i'm not going to play guitar for five or ten minutes i'm at least going to go on my phone and watch other people play guitar or i'm going to watch a, a lesson of something on youtube or i'm going to read some music or i'm going to try and write something in my head just something that has to do with music and you can anticipate you know if your goal is to master pokemon go anticipate the challenges like maybe your phone battery could run out right that's a challenge what if you're in the middle of trying to catch pokemon and your phone dies what do you do in that situation, right? Being able to anticipate these challenges that are going to pop up is like, I hear every successful person talk about that. Well, yeah, I remember the the business seminar that Tony Robbins had. He just talked about how um, when, a, when a problem, you should be expecting to plateau or expecting to go down in profits as a business or whatever, because then you don't freak out. <laughs> Because cause you can freak out and struggle and then you might make it, but that takes so much energy out of you. It's better to know that, hey, okay, this might go bad, so now I'm not going to like freak out when it happens. You know, you're not freaking out when your phone dies. You're not freaking out when a string breaks or something. You have an extra string for your yeah. guitar. And that's so important because it's that freaking out. Some people freak out for a decade. Some people freak out for 20 years. You know what I mean? And then next thing you know, their whole life is gone. And they've spent the whole time freaking out about what this person thinks, what that person thinks, how they failed 20 years ago, mm -hmm. you know, how they'll never be able to do it. Some people will freak out that long. And, and imagine the energy of 20 years of your life freaking out over this thing that you could get over like that if you made the decision. If you made the decision, like you committed to making that decision, it's not always easy. It's easy for me to say, but it's not always as easy for that person to do. But we know change happens in a moment. Change doesn't happen. You know, it's not this big giant thing that we, we have to fear. It happens in a moment as soon as you make that decision that this is what I'm going to do. And and sometimes, like, it's not always going to be the same thing. Like, don't be worried if you stop, if your passion for guitar dies out because there's always something else, you know. And, and it's not a bad thing changing passions because either way, you're doing what you love. Either way, like, that's all that matters. Life is nothing but living and you want to live doing what you love it doesn't matter what exactly it is as long as it's something enjoyable for you yeah oh for sure like one thing i didn't mention in mastery well with anything my whole life and i mentioned this a lot because when i was younger i didn't care about this whatsoever and it brought me so much pain and that is doing things for me and Forgetting about everybody else in the world, just doing things specifically, specifically because it brings me pleasure and not because I care whether or not it helps or brings joy to anybody else's life. That brought me so much pain um, growing up as a teenager because everything, not everything, but a lot of the things that I did, I did for my, my pleasure alone. And as a result, I felt so empty and, and so purposeless. 
Mm-hmm. If, if that makes sense, you know what I mean? As soon as I decided, you know, I'm going to make sure that my life is not only dedicated to becoming the best version of myself and making sure that I live a, a, a life of love and enjoyment and pleasure, but also that it's in alignment with servitude and I'm, I'm serving the greater good, whatever that greater good is, whether it's, you know, the planet, the humans, animals, you know, all these things that I really try to serve now greater than myself more than just you know hey what could I do to feel good right now or hey what could I do that would bring me pleasure or what could I do that would distract me from all my problems yeah exactly like that's that's what I mean by do what you love because honestly you don't really no one loves being selfish a shared experience is way better than anything else you know like when you're eating a big plate of mac and cheese or whatever it might be that's really delicious and some dude's sitting beside you starving and you're just going going at it like just eating the entire bowl like sharing that with him and seeing a smile on this person's face and having him thank you is so much better than just enjoying the flavor of this bowl of mac and cheese and tomorrow it's going to be going through me you know what i mean so i've noticed that too is that just share sharing is awesome sharing is karen (laughs) oh yeah like (laughs) One of the best experiences I've had playing music happened this weekend, actually, when I was, I had a performance, um, I had a performance in Erio last night and it was really cool. It was definitely something different than what I've ever done before because a lot of my performances I perform for, you know, adults and, you know, usually adults will react to music differently than kids will. But last night I played this gig where there's a lot of kid, a lot of kids, right? And you know, I could have just played the whole gig myself, got up there, you know, been all selfish and said, you know, hey, everybody, look at me. I'm this great musician. I'm, you know, kicking ass up here. You know, keep the kids and everybody off the stage. Get out of my way. I'm, I'm rocking out here. But, you know, these kids were, you know, I, I invited them on stage. I said, come on up here and enjoy this with me. You know, they were dancing. You know, they were pretending to be my band. It was a great time. Um, you know, I got, I let them get up and sing a couple songs, really trying to encourage them and bring them joy. And as a result, it brought me more joy just to see the joy on their faces. You know what I mean? Like that brought me so much more enjoyment seeing other people light up than, you know, just playing the whole show myself, kicking ass and then hearing people tell me I'm, I'm really good after. Yeah. I I mean, like I do a lot of solo stuff, a lot of one person gigs, but to do a gig where, you know, I can invite the crowd and have them really be a part of what I'm doing and, and enjoy it to the fullest with me. That's that's what I'm talking about. That's the best. I agree, man. I feel like um, I feel like it's just a human thing, you know, wanting to have others feel good around you. You know, like when you watch the Tony Robin, Robbins documentary, it makes you light up to see others light up because it's just it's just I don't know. Maybe that's how humans work. But Oh yeah. It, contribution is huge, man. Knowing that that you are changing someone else's life is such a fulfilling thing. And it's, and that that I know it, it goes hand in hand with mastery because what you're what you're going to master, you're going to want it to be something that that lights you up that just fulfills all your needs. I remember we listened to the Tony Robbins six human needs and we're like, "All right, we need to make sure that we're getting all of our six human needs through implicit because that's the only way we're going to go through with this for the rest of our life." Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. And that's why it's important when you're thinking of step one, initially, you know, limiting yourself to deciding what do you want to master and which things you want to master, make sure those things aren't just for you, right? Because <clears throat> if you're doing it just for you, like we said, it's, you're going to feel empty. It's not going to be worth it. Make sure you're doing it. So it's, it's in alignment with helping the greater good, serving something greater than yourself. Mm-hmm. Like for me, when I decided, you know, when I was asking myself, what do I want to master? Really, first thing I wanted to master was music, you know, guitar, you know, just being able to, you know, turn what I hear in my head into beautiful music that could inspire other people. And then the second thing I wanted to really master is communication. I want to be able to really communicate with people on a raw level and really be able to get deep and meaningful with it, right? Get the DM- DNM going mm-hmm. because that to me, that's what half this episode has been about. You know what I mean? It's just being able to communicate with people in such a way that you light them up and serve their needs as well as lighting yourself up and serving your own needs. Mm-hmm. 
So is there anything else you want to talk about when it comes to mastery, anything that's missing or any other tips? I mean, all I could say is I make sure, again, is that this is something that lights you up because otherwise you just won't fall through. You won't. Yeah. If I could, if I could give one more tip, I would say don't get dis- don't get distracted. Like eliminate the distractions. That could be anticipating challenges and distractions. Well, instant gratification is a huge distraction. It's that's the one right there. You know, because when it when you're on your your journey to mastery, there's going to be points where you get frustrated. There's going to be points where you hit your plateau and you don't think you could get any better. And so you think, you know, I could keep on doing this thing that you know, it's not really bringing me a lot of joy or I could go for the instant gratification. I could go watch Netflix right now or I go play Pokemon or whatever it is for you. So really it's important to anticipate those challenges and the distractions. Distractions are the biggest challenges, especially in this day and age. Everybody wants to talk to you. Everybody wants your, you know, you to help them. Everybody wants your, you, everybody wants you, you know what I mean? So it's important to make sure that you're taken care of first and that you're on track with the things that you were trying to master before you, you know, get distracted. <laughs> Alrighty. So, uh, you want to wrap this up? Let's wrap. It's this been up. around a half hour, I think. So, so yeah, this has been an awesome episode. Very calm. Me and him are not really very energetic today, but what are you talking about, Cam? I, I don't know, man. I'm uh, feeling great. Energy's on max level right now. Is it? Mine is on like, Maybe six out of ten, but I'm okay with it. Honestly, I'm kind of just mellow, I'm not minding it. I had a huge meditation today, 45 minutes. So, but yeah, this episode was awesome. Um, tune in next week. We might get another person in, or who knows? You know, it changes all the time. So, what 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 else do you have to say, Brent? Yeah, just you know, go out there and master something. Just be the best you could possibly be at what you love to do, and it'll bring you so much joy. And we'll see you again next week for another crazy, spontaneous, who knows what will happen episode of Leading Life. (laughs) Absolutely. So just remember to share this, contact us on social media, subscribe to the podcast, rate the podcast. Thank you guys again, and uh, we'll see you next week. Peace.